Miles, this is Mike Seidel. Good morning from Fort Pierce, Florida, 1 a.m. here on the East Coast. As we continue to deal with the impacts of Hurricane Matthew, a Category 4 storm, a major hurricane heading into territory that has hardly, hardly ever seen on the record historically a major hurricane, 3, 4, or 5. It hasn't made landfall yet, it still could, but right now it's hugging the coast just far enough offshore that the worst of the winds are staying offshore. With that said, we've had wind gusts at Jensen Beach of 71, Vero Beach to 60. Here in Fort Pierce, we're pushing 60 miles an hour as far as wind gusts go, and along with very heavy rainfall and the uh, short-term impact for thousands now from here down to the fall beaches with the power outages. Our power just went out here about 10 minutes ago, and right now we're up above 150,000 customers. Boy, some of these gusts just hit you just like a, just like a rock. Like that one. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. This is not even this is not even the outer eye wall. This is just some of these feeder bands coming in to the Treasure Coast here in St. Lucie County. Let's bring in our uh, tropical uh, specialist, Michael Lowry, back in Atlanta. Michael, what can you tell me uh, as far as the 1 o'clock update goes from the National Hurricane Center? Yeah, no big changes here, Mike. We're still looking at a Category 4 hurricane, winds of 130 miles per hour. That hurricane, Mike, so a lot still ahead, but obviously conditions really uh, the worst we've seen them all night where you are uh, there in Fort Pierce. Yeah, 56 mile an hour wind gust, as you mentioned. And and the good thing here in Point South is the wind now is north or northwest as you get down towards uh, Fort Lauderdale and Broward County, Miami, South Dade, uh, Miami, Dade County, and Miami. Winds are northwest offshore. So the north wind here is going to throw the water down the coast and not at the coast. So that's going to save us any real surge issues from this point on. But we have the wind and we have no power now. So we're uh, joining the other thousands of customers from Florida Power from here, especially from here south. Although we've gotten reports of power flashes up in the Space Coast area, and they're, they're a ways away from getting the uh, brunt of Matthew. And if, if Matthew clips, if the outer wall clips uh, the coast, it could be up there because uh, if you look at the map geographically, the Space Coast where Melbourne is, Cape Canaveral, uh, it juts out. And by the way, the brand new NOAA satellite, which we're going to cover live with uh, Jim Cantoni and Jim Carfagno, uh, in early next month in November, is safely in a building built to sustain Category 4 hurricane winds. So we don't have to worry about that uh, being damaged. Let's bring in Sam Champion, who is back with us now after uh, probably having a nice uh, meal and a nap. Sam, welcome back from uh, <laughs> Juno Beach. And I know through the evening, <laughs> through the evening, um, Ron Blom has had times when he was getting hit pretty hard. Uh, what's the status down there now, uh, about uh, 45 miles south of here? All right, well, Mike, let me show you. Uh, yeah, by the way, I, get, I did get about an hour and a half nap then morning ahead. Mike Sido. Yes. Okay, Sam, thanks for the update down there at uh, Juno Beach, about 40 miles south of here. Uh, we are still uh, in the thick of it here, not the outer eye wall, but that's the band that's off to the west of there. If, uh, if we get the outer eye wall, I won't be out here, but right now, so far, so good. It's staying just off uh, the coast. And remember, we're, we're about four, four miles or so inland. We decided to come inland and get off the beach. That's not a place to be tonight. The power is out here as well as for over 150,000 customers in Florida. As Matthew continues to spread northwest at 13, now we're getting updates every hour because it's in radar range, but the next uh, full update of the new flat will not come up for about another four hours at 5 a.m. Eastern. Let's bring in Michael Lowry back in Atlanta the Weather Tower headquarters. Michael, we can just get a sense of what it feels like, but these are not hurricane force winds. You know, we're talking 50, 55 miles an hour, but it's a stinging horizontal rain whipping around, and uh, fortunately we have light. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The reason I have to turn away is it's just too painful, even with the, the glasses on. Michael, take it away, buddy. Yeah, man. Uh, stay safe out there. It, it is, you know, it's remarkable, again, that, you know, Mike is, he's seeing tropical storms, clearly seeing sustained tropical storm conditions there, and gusts now to close to hurricane strength. It <laughs> 
This is meteorologist Mike Seidel, now being joined by storm tracker Jim Cantori. Hurricane Matthew is still a Category 4, 130 mile an hour winds, northwest of 13. Jim, it's right at our latitude, and we're getting the, the worst of the weather. I know you've had a bit of a break, but this is what we've been dealing with for a couple of hours. Uh, but as you told me earlier, you didn't think the center was going to come on shore. So far, no. it hasn't. Not here. Not, not, not in Fort Pierce. Not Fort Pierce. Uh, no, maybe up towards the Cape. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to wait and see on that. But what's really interesting is if you look at the radar right now, what you're going to see is basically the center, even the little center that's still out there, uh, equal. I mean, it's east, east, right east of Fort Pierce. So it would literally have to turn immediately left and well, go westbound. It's not doing that. We know it's moving I basically west. said uh, virtually impossible for us to right. get a direct hit. Exactly. I mean, even Charlie didn't make a right turn. And it has been tracking northwest now for, what, three days? Three days. This is basically since it left Cuba. And, so, you know, it's kind of interesting, too, because days. before it got to Haiti, uh, I remember this, this eyewall replacement cycle issue that never really completely happened. And it's almost like that started yesterday. We, it tried to go through one. We had this double eyewall structure, and then that never happened. The problem is, if you remember back in 2005 with Wilma, the last major, by the way, to hit the United States, uh, you had a two nautical mile eye that went to a 75 nautical mile wide eye, which was a huge problem for South Florida. So, you know, should we complete that cycle, we're going to be in much bigger problems, I think, in terms of the wind field, because now you've spread out uh, much farther, farther those hurricane force winds. So, either way, we're still in big trouble. And the right? high tide cycle, uh, certainly midday tomorrow is a concern up in the northeast part of the way the coast is. Uh, they're very concerned in Jacksonville. Let's bring in Michael Lowry, who uh, is uh, back in Atlanta. And Jim and I have been talking about the situation. Down here, it's more of a wind issue right now, and that's the way it's going to stay because the winds are that blowing parallel to the coast. But up north, Michael, it's still on shore. It's going to be that way for quite a long time. Yeah, Mike, I swear the weather gods must know that we have Seidel and Cantori on camera at once because that outer band is pivoting ever so close to where you are there and that outer band is ferocious uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot still here to, to go we're just starting things out uh, let's go back to mike in the uh, in the field mike yeah I'm mike side out here with jim cantori we'll have more with jim as we go through the early morning hours here hurricane matthew is still a very dangerous hurricane could be catastrophic for some jim yeah we are just four seconds to the front for this uh matthew covers I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel, Hurricane Matthew, heading uh, up and along the Florida East Coast. You can see the winds here. We've just did uh, close to 60 miles an hour uh, down to the Palm Beaches, uh, down to uh, the Indian River County area. We've had gusts on the coast up around 70 miles an hour. That's just below hurricane force. And that is knocking out power now. About 185,000 customers. Florida Power reporting. 185,000 customers have lost power. We have lost it here uh, about uh, half an hour ago. It went out. It, it flickered for a while, then it went out. And uh, not only just here, I mean, the whole horizon is dark. The whole, whole little area here off I-95 is uh, in the black. Uh, meanwhile, we've got a long way to go with this. This is not a hurricane that comes in, makes landfall, and weakens as it goes inland and drops heavy rain, and then we're done with it. This is going to stay right along the coast for another couple of days until sometime Saturday afternoon when it starts dropping off to the south and east. Let's bring in Michael Lowry, our hurricane specialist back in Atlanta. And Michael, as I met, just mentioned, this is not a, a one day and done deal. Uh, we're dealing with it domestically here in the United States, not even to think about what happened in Cuba and Haiti, especially in Haiti with uh, nearly 200 and uh, I guess it was 289 fatalities, all but six there. But we're going to be dealing with it here at least till Saturday, and then it goes out and may come back as a weaker system next week. Yeah, Mike, with Haiti, it was the rainfall and the flooding from the rainfall. We're obviously going to watch for the rainfall, the strong winds, uh, but the storm surge is going to be one of the bigger threats from this. All right, uh, I'd say it's a, a, probably about an Aaron Rodgers pass from me right now is uh, Mike Seidel uh, over here. Uh, Mike, what do you, I mean, seriously, what's interesting, I'm right up close to the hotel a little bit. You're out, let's say, maybe 25 yards from it. Uh, what do you, what's the difference in the wind just out there? Well, I think it's uh, stronger here because 
We are uh, not blocked by anything. You're over there by the building under the portico. I can see the light in the distance. And we're getting uh, the wind coming right down the street here between the hotels. It's a northerly wind coming right at me. And that's why I've got the uh, stop sign here just to keep my balance. You know, the wind's just 50, 60 miles an hour, weigh 175. It'll knock you. And it's, it's, a, it's a function if the wind catches you off guard uh, because uh, sometimes it will do that. And the rain right now is not coming down particularly hard. We're about an inch and a half or so, so far in Fort Pierce at the airport. And that alone is not going to cause much of a problem. We have had some pounding on the roadways. And as Jim mentioned, uh, about all that we've seen falling down some of these palm fronds. Uh, this is pretty typical when you have uh, even thunderstorms. These things will come down. This is like small branches on a tree uh, up north where we don't have palm trees because of the uh, climate difference. As far as what's going on power-wise, uh, over 180,000 customers have lost power. We've lost power here. Fortunately, it is a, a very warm October night. Temperatures in the upper 70s, so that's not a concern. But, you know, you, you come to you expect electricity. Uh, you've got uh, frozen food, and, you know, you, wanna, you want air conditioning and things like that. But we're going to have to go without that for a while. Uh, we talked to a Florida Power official earlier, and he said, and I, I assume this is going to be the case, until these winds back down, uh, Jim, below about 30 miles an hour, they're not going to put the bucket trucks up. So uh, they're doing some short-term fixes on the ground, but until the winds back off uh, later tomorrow morning, uh, some of this power, is, it's not going to come back on until they can get back up when these winds back off. Jim? Yeah, I think that what's really this is going to boil down to uh, for you guys in terms of power, especially since they've pre-positioned uh, personnel to come in and get this power back on.